Hello friends, it's me, Cynthia. And Zelia. Hello. And we're Green Girl Studios. Uh, today, I'm going to show you some wet felting in 3D. So, and I've got some, I have a new kit that I'm excited to show you. So that's going to be hit good. And this is that thing. I don't know if I'm... That if, watering can for it's felting. It's like a watering can for felting. But I can bring it a little closer if you want to mm. show it. So it's a tiny watering can for felting. I'm going to drip it in a second. I'm going to show you. So today we had some extra trauma. Some, <laughs> And when I say extra trauma, I mean traumatizing so this this has never happened to me before as I sent out a, a message and it was she's like we're gonna tell people what happened and it's not as bad as we had thought originally but it was pretty upsetting so yesterday or the day or whatever day it was, it was yesterday was it oh so it was yesterday um I was running errands, filling and going around getting things done in the car, and my last stop of the day was to take the packages to the post office. What I realized was that at some point the packages were no longer in the back of my car. I must have left down the window or something. And I didn't notice it until I went to go to the post office and about 20 packages in the basket were fully gone out of my car. And we were like, okay, maybe you left them at home. Maybe they weren't, maybe they're in the studio, but they weren't. They were, they were on their way and someone had just removed them from my vehicle. And so... I went into kind of, I didn't go and get catatonic or anything, or, you know, pass out, but I was ready to, because everything, it was like $1,400 worth of stuff, and I was just like, you gotta be joking. The and whole the basket. Universe, the whole basket, the ba including the basket, and the stuff that was in the back seat, you know, so I was like, man, maybe the universe could take a minute from kicking me, and, you know do something else for a minute spread that around a little fortunately, fortunately uh, we were able to replace almost everything that was in the basket and i can you know we can recast a lot of it and you know but there are a few things in there there's like five things that can't be replaced and so what i'm going to do is find out if folks would like if i put in something from my pri private collection to make up for it something good not you know like i mean i would say we would refund it but man things have been we're trying to get a car and it's like every time i get money saved up for a car there's something else that comes between me and that car and it's you know very very exhausting dealing with stuff like this you know and you're you're like, yeah, I'm getting ready. We're gonna go down. To, we're gonna be able to go down to Florida and pick up a buy a car, you know. And it just, you know, sometimes things happen that you don't expect. And when that happens, you can get upset and feel like the whole world's against you, or you can just say, well, it could have been worse. It could have been, you know, it could have been gold or something. I didn't have any gold, but it could have been a lot of... That's a good idea, Lauren. How about giving a credit? Why did we move away? I know. That's, I think it was Ingalls parking lot is where things disappeared. And this is, you know, it's my fault. I was really distracted. We had company coming in. Our friend was coming in from LA and I was running around trying to get everything ready. And I wasn't paying attention, I guess, because, you know, some places, I hate to say it, but some parts of Asheville are kind of getting a little rough. Where there's uh, some kind of element of, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know why people do what they do. But I wasn't happy about it, that's for sure. I was pretty upset. 
But you know what? You got to keep going. You got to keep figuring things out instead of looking at the the hard side. You know. So what I'm doing now is I'm making piles. I'm, someone asked last week. They said, "Hey, how would you make a cat cave?" A cat cave is a way of felting. It's called the Scandinavian method, and it's where you can make you can make 3D things. It's actually really flipping smart. I don't know how they came up with it, but it's so smart. I've made booties. You can make a cat cave. What couldn't you make? You can make a yurt if you had enough wool. And I think, you know what, I think that's how they they make it that, that way in Mongolia, is to drag the wool behind them on a horse, but it has a resist on the inside. Something's in there keeping it from completely closing up. I'm going to show you how to do that. So you could, it's going to be on a smaller kind of a, maybe, I don't know if I would call this miniature because there's quite a bit of wool sitting here, but. Oh, you want to make a beret? Yeah. Well, yeah, let's do it. So I'm We're going to make a beret. I'm cutting out the ah. pattern for it. Let me see. I was so distracted. Hello, friends. Hello, Ann. Our friend Ann's on. Deanna, raining hard in NC. You know what? We did not have any rain today. It was raining a couple days ago. Maybe. Was that yesterday or the day before? Our our old neighbor Mike. Hello, Mike. Nilda, Anissa, Allison. Hello, friends. So good to see everyone here. This is kind of a random day for us, but you know, I kind of I told Azalea I said I'm getting to where I like doing these lives and sharing. I asked her and I said, hey, do you think anyone would want to watch me make chili oil? I don't know if, if y'all have tried crunchy chili oil, but I put that stuff on eggs. I put it on fish and rice. It's, if it didn't give me, I'm not supposed to eat spicy food, so I make mine very mild and without too much heat. It's actually, there's very little heat. It's mostly the flavor of garlic and mild chilies. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm using this blender board. I call it a blender. I think the actual name for this is a carter. They use this to kind of flatten out the fibers and stretch them out. So if you've seen the last couple of weeks, we've been working with a lot of wool. And it's been a lot of fun. There's all different kinds of wool. This is from Malabrigo. They dye this roving. This is called roving. It's 100% uh, Merino top, I believe this comes from New Zealand, if I remember what the what the tag said. And in New Zealand, they have more sheep than they do people, so that makes sense to me. Alright, this is not a perfect circle, but it is so symmetrical. doesn't matter if it's going to be a perfect circle. This it is, is going to take a minute, so we're going to get started. This is a 40 centimeter diameter. So when you're making anything with felting, one of the, thing, the things you have to remember is this stuff shrinks. And it shrinks because the fibers are compacting down. And wool is super good for being kind of, not kind of, it is a very insulating fiber. So it's good if it gets wet and it'll still keep you warm without weighing you down. Kind of like how cotton cannot be, you know, if you, you've worn a jean jacket, when it's raining and it's it gets pretty heavy it's not a great feeling but if you had something wool you could shake that thing out and it still keep you kind of warm so what i did was i made these little fluffy bundles of the roving and it, they're in about two three inch sections that is every time i do this let me see that's the length of they call it the staple of the fiber. That kind of, so when you get half wool, you're shaving it off or shearing it off of the sheep. And that length is the staple. So if it, if it has, like some sheep have kind of long fur or wool, I guess. What do you call that? Their hair. It's not hair. It's not fur. It's wool, right? Yeah. Wool. Like if it's an Angora sheep, it's still wool. Yeah. It's not. So anyway, the difference between fur and hair is that fur is usually hollow in the middle. Hair, like on a human and on a dog, is like solid. 
on a cat, it's hollow. More yeah, his fur does felt. Usually human, human hair and dog hair, it doesn't really want to felt, even though people will try to get it to felt, like dreadlocks, you know, that's, it keeps its uh, natural integrity, I guess, though. I don't know what the word is. I don't know what, what you would call that. I don't know what you're saying to me, little daughter. Oh, yeah, you could try it. Ah. Gwen's on. Hi, Gwen. It's Kate's mom. I can't wait to see y'all in... When are we going? August 12th. There is a big retreat. It's sold out already. In one day. So I'm excited. We're going to go. Where's that, that template, honey? Oh, here it is. So, to make any kind of... If you're going to do any kind of wet felting... You need, with, if you're going to make a hollow 3D thing, you're going to need to resist. This is plastic that I got from, where'd we get this? Hobby Lobby or Joanne? Um, it's Hobby it, Lobby, wasn't it? Maybe so, because the, the, the paper wrapping on it is for covering up chairs and couches. So and they stuff. use this for covering tables. My mom uses it. She has this, and it's sturdy. This stuff lasts forever. She has a tablecloth made out of crochet, white crochet, and then she put this on top. And so you can see the crochet under it, and then you can set things on it and just wipe it. This is not, it's not super cheap, but I think it was like 3 or $4 a yard. You can buy shower curtains at Target. It's a little thinner. But what you're looking for is something that's a little bit thick and that will, that will kind of kind of hold up. You don't have to keep redoing this over and over. So this is a, this is my pattern and it's going to be a beret. So what I'm going to show you. Oh, thank you, Wendy. This is actually, um, I'm going to show you. This is an apron that my friend Mary Cravens made just for me. It has these great big deep pockets. And she, I wore this to the tryouts. There was a show. What was that show called, Azalea, that I made it to the last round, but I wasn't chosen? It was like you remember? Some craft it was Mike, Mike Offerman and Amy Poehler. There was a craft show, and I made it all the way. We drove down to Charleston to meet with the art directors and to do like a screen test. You know, you stand up in front of well, a screen. And, you know, you basically talk in front of it, and they see if you're going to be on the show. And when I was pulling out all my stuff, I set it out on the table. It was like, people were coming up, and they're like, wow, I could have sold a bunch of things. And I don't know. I don't know why they didn't choose me on the show, but I made it all the way down to that part. I think when I was like, you know, I'm kind of afraid of power tools. I shouldn't have said that because maybe I could have gotten on the show. And if I did, I would have worn a Green Girl Studios t-shirt. And it would have been awesome. But, <laughs> yeah, I could make a raspberry. Good, That's good. But this, I guess, is kind of raspberry colors. These are Malabrigo colors. I'm going to switch the camera over so you can see what I'm doing down here. And I'm going to try and move quick because otherwise this can kind of take a minute. You can see we cleaned up in the studio a little bit. Say hi, Azalea. Hi. It's all my fabric. That's actually not all the fabric, but it's some of the fabric. Okay. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, can you find me? I don't know if this is going to fit, Azalea, but I need a big, big piece of bubble wrap to do this. You remember we need to do the slapping action? I have to count the same strand of beads like six times now. Sorry. All right, so here's where this is in play. This is the fluffy. I'm going to get that piece of cheesecloth. Be nice if I could, if I could just get it and not have to read. I had some scrim, but I couldn't find it. You know, it kind of. I thought that was scrim. I know, but this one, I, this is cheap. It's a little less uh, dense. Um. All right. I'll I'll 
I'm not sure how much the, the bubble wrap is not super wide. Yeah, I know. So I have that so pool much. wrap if you can find that. Do what? That pool wrap. Oh, that's been moved somewhere. That's Should be. Well, maybe it's in my my room. Oh. oh. All right, so I put this under. This is so I can flip it. Oh, thanks, Ellen. I I really hope to get on that show. But you know what? Ah, uh, they admired the heck out of my apron. They were like, "Oh my God, we love that apron!" And they took so many pictures. And I don't want to say that the the apron inspired. The one that Amy's wearing on the show, but maybe it is. Okay, so I'm going to put this. This is going to be my first layer. This can be reversible. So, I don't know if you watched the one on Sunday, but you want to make sheer layers. And the pattern that you use to lay the wool out will determine how the piece will shrink. Now, if you go in one direction, it's going to shrink this way, vertical. So, what you don't want to do is go like I'm gonna have it where it kind of radiates out from the center and I'm gonna do a few layers it's gonna be kind of rainbow bright a little bit because originally I thought hey I'll just separate it but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen with this it's gonna get kind of mix mix and match but maybe I will be make it where it's um, all purple on one side and all green on the other we'll see so I'm laying this down in a kind of a wagon wheel and you want to make it where it overlaps your pattern so that it can fold over. You can do the same way to make a cat house, but your thing is going to have to be way bigger because this is supposed to be on your head. So this, it's, it shrinks about 50%, this type of wool. There's different kinds. Some have a higher shrinkage rate than others. This one is about 50 percent maybe a little more depends on how densely you pack it oh hello clem our friend clem is joining us today all right we were talking about if we could go when we go out to fresno maybe we can have kind of a a little bit of a party for our west coast friends wouldn't that be fun? We're hoping to go to the Bay Area. Because we'll be in Fresno. We're going to be there for several days. For the retreat. I have some really fun things planned. I'm so excited. I'm actually making a pigment blend for the retreat. And that is going to be in everybody's goodie bag making a bunch of things. I want to make a good impression. It's my first time going to this retreat, so I want to I want it to be extra. All right, this is looking good. It's fine. The bubble wrap, some people use a washboard. The bubble wrap is just a way to make it a little bit faster. It has that texture on it that will give it some of the agitation we need so that it'll felt otherwise you know it won't felt that fast so and you probably notice i'm going outside of the piece of plastic about an inch and i think i put the the scrim on the wrong side actually it's supposed to be so you can flip it. I have grabbed you four sheets of this. I looked for your bubble wrap or your. I have. You know what I usually use? It's a else. pool cover. It floats on top yeah. of a pool. I looked And for it's it. blue and it has a really good. I know what it looks thick. like. I knew exactly what I was looking for, but I could not find it anywhere. Hmm. So here's this four sheets that can come apart. Can you I think it's probably over there somewhere in that corner. Oh, hello, Kalite. Uh, I saw a comment from Lauren earlier when we were talking about some of the lost items and she had the idea of giving people credits. Yeah, that's a good for idea. For stuff that is not replaceable. 
it's a good idea. There's there's like four or five lots that I don't have any way to replace it and I was so disgusted I could have cried in fact I did I had to just go into the bathroom for a minute and take a moment but you know they say that that's a good way to just sort of like kind of like it's like I think of it like steam being released from a pot <laughs> I was letting off some steam for sure and then I have a jump rope and then I went out and I jump roped my hind end off. And that took about like four minutes. And I'm being generous when I say four minutes. It was actually more like a minute and a half. Because it turns out jumping is uh, it's kind of hard on your ankles a little bit. I was like, when was the last time I jumped? Except for that time I tried to jump those slippery rocks in Ligonier. Remember that? Uh, uh, if I ever, if you ever hear me say the phrase... Do you think I can clear that jump? You think I can make that? You think I can make that? The answer is no. I said yes. No, so. Thornton. You're not clearing that jump. So I'm feeling this right now. And it feels like it's going to compact down. And it's going to make a nice, a nice plush fabric. Where's that piece that I made the other day? Here's the other one. This is from a couple days ago. This was on top of a piece of other felt, but this is like three layers, I think. All right, I want to go for a little bit more. Do you think this, that's, I don't think that's thick enough. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get some of this and do some, someone said raspberry beret. Let's, let's do that. Oh, listen, Kalite, when I was jumping, it was, it was jiggling. Let's, let's just say that no, now. No. We were, I was, I was hopping around trying to jump rope. I watched this dude jump rope. He makes it look so easy. Azalea kind of makes fun of me when I'm watching this. She's like, you're watching that gym bro again? I'm like, he's not a gym bro. Even though there's a bunch of gym equipment in the room, he kind of reminds me of, uh, that one, that Kennedy that got assassinated. Uh, what was that? I usually let you be when you're watching <laughs> that kind of stuff. Well, I, you know. I am not so hateful. I like that pink you got on there. Yeah, I knew you would. You making that for me to wear? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's pink and green. And some of those colors are a little bit... Um, that orange is a little weird in there, but we'll cover it up with this. You won't even be able to tell it's in there. This will be such a pretty fabric when it's done. Now you'll also notice that I'm kind of going in, like if the, I'm trying to get it where it's angled so that there won't, there won't be any holes. You don't want any holes in your felt. It'll be warm though. I made a couple other uh, felted hats and they looked really good, although the one that I made, the witch hat, I put so much work into it and it essentially looked black. And when you're seeing it, it looks black. You can't even see the colors. But I was so proud of it. I was like, look at this hat I made. I think it looks really good. Galaxy hat. It's a, it's a, well, just basically a witch hat that looks, looks like, um, just a variety of colors. Some of these colors will peek through, so that's why, you know, you'll see a little bit of that. Now, the resistance side will make this so that you can wear it. If you're wondering how this is going to go together, it's like magic. It's so magical. So awesome. I've made a lot of different things with this technique. And it's not terribly difficult. You just need roving. You need some resist. Some, when I say resist, it's the plastic thing. Okay, so... Let's see. Oh, I forgot I had this color over here. There's going to be a lot of pink on this side. I love that pink. I love the idea of raspberry gray. Yeah. We'll see how this looks. We'll see if it looks good. Now, when I put my hand down and I smash it like this, I can kind of feel the thickness of it. And <laughs> I 
I see that's funny. You were trying to do cartwheel. I can't, I can't remember last time I did a cartwheel. I can't do cartwheels just because everything that I have in my pockets would just fall out. And if you think that my pockets are, are not always bulging with rocks and things, they are beads, rocks. No matter where I go, I have stuff coming out of my pockets. Oh, this is a nice kind of... I like this color. Do you see this, Azalea? It's like a cloud. Well, Wendy, when you're feeling it, this is the hard part, because when you feel it, when it kind of compresses, you can kind of tell about how thick it's going to be. Right now, if you felt this, it's not that thick. It's maybe, like I'm compressing it, maybe three millimeters. It's hard to say, because I'm feeling it against some other stuff, like this cloth is underneath there. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Kind of frosty all right i think this will be the last now if you don't do enough layers too you can get more shrinkage because there'll be more space between the fibers and you don't want that this will be reversible too which is kind of a cool thing because then it's like getting two hats in one now if you shape it and make a weird pattern you know, because sometimes when people make felted hats, they go a little hog wild. You've probably seen these at art shows where people, you know, it's, you know, they get, it's different. <laughs> now, I didn't go in another, I've just been kind of radiating it out and making it where the layers are not crisscrossing necessarily, but they're more at an angle. Like, let's see if I can get that. So they're kind of, they're, the first layer was running this way, and then the second was running kind of like this way. And that's pretty good. You want, if you can get them to kind of crisscross a little, that is pretty nice. Because that way it doesn't just shrink in one direction. You get a full, like the shrinkage will be kind of uniform. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I think I put this... I'm going to take that sheet off. It's like a pizza. I'll take that off of there. Now, look at this neat thing. This is pretty cool. I just got this... It's like a watering can, but it drips the stuff out. Isn't that cool? Now this is where this, the, where'd that piece go? Oh, here we go. In theory, I should have done this first before I got it wet. All right. This is so it doesn't stick to my fingers. And I used a little bit of warm water Hopefully it doesn't distort the image too much. Put a little bit more on there. You could also... The other day I couldn't find that thing. You could also just use your hand and sprinkle it. This is an olive oil based soap. One of my friends made it. I don't remember who. I've had it for many, many years. But this is one Diane made. Oh, hello Nancy! Oh, Wendy, this, you know what, we have to ban the cats from in here because they get up to no good. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to compress this down. I'll put that on there because it's coming out. Yeah, I hope this looks good. And I hope it doesn't take me forever. Sometimes it can take a minute. That part that you just saw is actually one of the longest parts of the whole process. You're speed running it. I am. I'm going fast because I don't want to be doing this. Like, I don't want it to be like, you know, like two hours and I'm still on the one side. <laughs> People be like, man, no wonder felting is so, ex like felted objects are so expensive. <laughs> now you can see, I can, now with this being compressed, I can feel it, how thin it is. So you can add to 
a felted. You can add to it after the fact, but it seems to me that sometimes it doesn't stick as well when you do it that way. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, now here's the tricky part. Here's the tricky. This is the tricky part. Flipping this whole shebang over without ruining it. So what I'm going to do, I'll put my hand under the pizza and I'll flip the whole thing over. Maybe it would be good to put it over here to get it. Yeah, I've done this before. I was thinking what if it was easy to put a, like a piece of, uh, like a something stiff on the top, like a piece of cardboard or something with it, mm -hmm. like a pizza. Yeah, exactly. So it kind of shifted the plastics, but that's easy too. I can scooch it over a little bit. Scooch that guy over. All right. It's looking pretty good. Now here's where, this is where, why you need it to have a little extra on the other side. So the other side it looks like I made this purple. Now the trick of this will be to get these sides get that okay so I'm gonna carefully take the edges. This is your seam. So I'm gonna smush them on the opposite side See how I'm doing that? This is the seam. So you're gonna do a whole other side. And this is how you get a hollow form. So if you were to make a cat cave, someone said, hey, could you make a cat cave? This is exactly, exactly how you'd make a cat cave. The only difference being, unless your cat is a kitten, this is gonna be too small. Because this is made for a hat. Now, I should have flipped this with a little bit more, there's some on the on this bottom part that it's not quite, but I can add to it. It's not quite covering the edge. I'm doing the whole thing. Hopefully this looks good. We'll see. And if it if it looks ugly, I can always add to it. You know, it'll be pretty. Hopefully. I have made some dog poo looking felted <laughs> things in my day. Dog poo. Mm -hmm. I think we should make cat caves next to all the rubber we've got. Barbie would definitely appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I have been collecting wool for a long time. I've been making this. I learned how to knit when I lived in Toledo, Ohio. A long time ago, and I used to work for a company called Caruth Studio, making garden art. That's what I did on the weekday, and at night, sometimes I would, or not night, but on my, uh, I had a secondary job that was making haunted house. I was just getting ready to put this next. I was looking at this and saying, okay, so here's where it can get kind of like you want to do it where it's not, it doesn't look like you have two different colors. So I want to use, I want to start with this purpley color so that that's on the inside. Does that make sense? So if I'm seeing that mostly purple, I mean, you don't have to, you can do whatever you want, but I want the outside, the, the top to match the, the underside. So. I'm going to start with this purpley color and do the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's... Well, that went a little more green. There's some of that purple in there. My hands are slightly damp, so it makes... Hopefully, I can get nice... You, want, you don't want to do clumps like how I just did that. You want it to be more... You know, it's a little wet. Like it can be... Wrists. You don't want it to be, like, willy-nilly. And, like, I don't know. I feel like the fiber kind of will show it in the end. 
Yeah, that's kind of sloppy. That'll look a little bit sloppy on the other side. That'll be, okay, this will be the hole we cut from that spot. Oh, it looks like there's a little bit of that fantasy film got in there. Could go around of that. I could, in theory, do two different colors. It wouldn't be unheard of, and it would be nice. Could do the whole outside one other color. Or white, like that kind of... This green, I didn't want that green. I meant the green part. It's all green on that. I need to rip some of this off. Wendy asks, can you keep the plastic in there? For now, yes, this is how you're going to get how this is going to be a hollow, hollow three-dimensional piece. Because without this, it would just make a round disc. It wouldn't be hollow. The resist in the middle, this piece of plastic, will make it so that it's, uh, so that it's hollow form. So since you need to have a hole for the uh, for the head, do you continue to put stuff all over the plastic or do you leave a gap? Nope, you do not leave any gap. There are no gaps. Number one, they would just felt closed if you tried to have a gap. There's no way to keep a gap. But what you'll do, and again, you go all the way over the, uh, the line so that you can kind of seal the whole piece of plastic inside there and all will become clear y'all will be like what magic is that because it is kind of magic i took this class at oh man i don't even remember it was it's been a long time i've been making these for a long time not this particular hat but um what felted things are one of my favorite favorite thing to make I have a pattern that I downloaded not that long ago of a jacket. So you could actually make a jacket or coat. But your pattern, listen, that pattern is like, I need a bigger table. Maybe I have to put two of those tables together. Easily have to put two tables together. Because... You have to make it 50 to 60% larger. So that pattern is massive. And Wait, the, what? the pattern for that jacket that I downloaded. Oh, yeah. Oh, 50 to 60%. I thought it was only 30%. No, no. Some wool is only 30%, but that's like that Wolseleydale or whatever you call it from... Uh, remember when we were watching that show with, you know, Cheese Gromit, what's his name? Arkham Wallace Studios, and Wallace and Gromit. That's the cheese. There's a wool that's like Woolsley or something. I can't think the name of it, but it felt really fast. And it's a pretty coarse fiber and it's pretty fun. A lot of the sculptors that use them use that wool to make really realistic animals. Very realistic. I have one on making kittens. I ordered, I went through a phase where I was like buying every book I could find on felting. It's pretty fun. And then I did needle felting for a while and it's, it's so labor intensive that you really I don't know how anybody makes any money at it like you really have to mark it way up to cover your time because it's not a as you can see this has already been like what does it say almost 40 minutes and I am not close well I just have to make I could add another layer hopefully you guys aren't in a hurry to do something else with your night I'm gonna put some of this I guess I have more of that pretty soft pink This is a little bit different texture. You can see it felts out a little bit. Like, that's a little... Uh, where'd that other one go? I like it a little bit better. I'll put some of that white. It's more of a cloud color, really. 
This texture is like cotton candy. It's so soft and fluffy. I love it. The fun thing is that all these colors, they sit, they will visually mix in your, like in your eyes. But when you look closely, you'll see all the myriad colors because they don't really blend together. They blend visually, but when you look close, it's, it's almost like pixelation. So you can see I'm putting them at a slightly different angle than where I started. Hey, do you want to pick a color for the outside? Go over the whole thing, you think? Two layers or just one layer is fine? Um, I like the colors that you picked. It doesn't have to be a heavy duty beret, does it? Or do, oh, unless you think no. it needs to have more layers, then I can pick another color, but I think what you've got here looks pretty good. Thank you. I think it needs more green. You can smell that green color. Oh, yeah, Wendy, flipping a coat. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that would be a challenge. You know, you probably need a little bit of help to flip that. I think. Maybe. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer live, I think, because I don't know if I can get that. It's okay. This kind of reminds me of making a pizza with this being this shape. Mm -hmm, it's like I'm, mm -hmm, I'm putting all the toppings. The toppings are going down. You've probably seen those cat cat caves where they'll have like the interior will be like one color and then the outside will be another. That's because they did two different layers of this. And you can absolutely do that. You can felt, you can needle felt on top of it. And that works. So if you wanted to say you wanted to needle felt ears or something on there, there was a gal that was making felted hoods and she had hers in the anthropology catalog, these beautiful animal hats were made this way, but they're kind of loose. It looked like it was very loosely felted. Azalea is not a fan of loosely felted. She bought a... What was that little hamster that you got that one time? I got a mouse. And the that cats got sick. a hold, hold of it and they ravaged it. <laughs> and Azalea's like, can you fix it? And she's like, I don't know. But it was really loosely felted. It was from Mosaic. Hmm. Let's go with some little bit of green on top. I have it already here, sitting here, so I might as well use it, right? I don't like it when it gets like clumps like that because they'll be linear in the design. So I want them to kind of spread out. I was looking around for that little piece that I made on Sunday, somewhere in here, probably in that big, big uh, stack of stuff. And you know what? I did a lot of these clumps before we started. Because I was like, I'll save time and I'll be done soon. Hmm. I made the witch hat took me all night. But it was twice the size of this because I made it have a nice long pointy tip on it. And I felted it hard so that it would stand up. See, anytime you leave it where it's going to be like this, you're going to get a, an, a, a kind of a streak. So you want to spread them out so that they make kind of a beautiful net. So some of the colors will peek, will peek out from underneath. You should put some of those iridescent colors in there. Yeah, I like that right there. This is going to felt really prettily. The one that I made, that piece of fabric from Sunday, I was just feeling it and going, man, this made such a beautiful fabric. And I thought, man, I would like to make a skirt with this, like a winter skirt, like a wrap skirt. I saw this ad on Facebook 
that was, it was like a winter, they called it, I think they called it a winter sarong. And I was like, what? I'm intrigued. Basically, they, they just had like a, a wool blanket that was in a sarong size. And, you know, you just wrap it around you. And I guess it was one of the ways that the Vikings would keep warm. It was like a full, kind of like a kilt almost. So then I was like, what if, of course, I'm like, what if I made it with a wet felted piece of fabric in all different kind of like galaxy colors? That would be really cool. So that's, I'm going to do that, I think. Oh, another clump. Let me feel this. So this is tricky. The other side is usually, I feel like, the harder side because it's hard to tell when you have a layer underneath. Yeah, because so when you press down... You, you press know. down, you're kind of like, well, is it thick enough? Because you can't really tell. But I can kind of feel that there's the plastic, and I'm, what I'm looking for is any gaps. Oh, here's a big gap right there. Get in there and pat, fill that in. I love it when the pink and green kind of meld together. It makes such a pretty murky shade. Me too. And so this is the, I'm feeling now to see if, if there's any more. And you want to go around the edge to make sure that you have about an inch to flip and make the outside seam. Because otherwise it will make a hole and you don't want that. Because it's not a planned hole. If you if you have a hole in your design, you want to be able to plan it. You don't want it to be like an accidental. There are scarves that are made like this with with uh, yarn, and it's kind of holy. Kind of makes a web type shape. If that makes any sense, I'm not describing that very well. But lately, we've been doing so much wool felt. It's so fun has nothing to do with anything that we make, but here we are. It's fine, right? I told us I said, we should do some cooking on here, because I love to cook. Maybe people would like to see how I make chicken adobo. Oh yeah, maybe they would. I think people would like to watch you cook. Oh, maybe. If anyone wants to see me make chili oil, I need to make a batch. Or garlic confit. That's one of my favorite things to make. The kids love it because it's like roasted garlic, but in a convenient, already peeled. You don't have to, like, bust them out of the those little... And it has the oil. So good. So buttery. Mm-hmm. It's, it's heavenly. It doesn't last very long in this house because everybody's a garlic fan in here. All right, I feel like that is getting there. Azalea told me that she can recognize and locate me by the sound of my bracelets when we're out. Isn't that yeah. funny? <laughs> if we're walking through the craft store and I can't find her and I hear just a little jingle of her bracelets, I know where she is. She can find me. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Anne says that we could sew some of the charms on. Yeah, that'd be fun. That is a cute idea. Oh, I love that soft pink. I just love pink. You know, when I was a teenager, I would have rather die than wear pink. Everything had to be black or dark red. I had a really awkward goth phase and it was so awkward because when you're from Florida and you're trying to look like you're a bored goth kid, it doesn't quite work because all of your makeup, all that white makeup, you're trying to make yourself look ghostly. I already did not look ghostly because I'm not that ghostly to begin with. It was just really kind of, that was not a well-documented part of my youth. 
my mom would say she'd be. I'm gonna do an impersonation of my mom. Hopefully she's not listening, so she don't get after me. She'd go, "How come you dress like you're already dead?" And I'd be oh. like, "Cause, ma, it's the style." I've been fighting with this one. It's like, how is this one piece of thread keep floating back on here? It wants to be. There's another one. It must be a different piece of thread. All right, that feels like that should be. Hopefully, it's not too thick because then you have one side thicker than the other. This doesn't really match. It's going to be kind of a smorgasbord. All right, here we go. Getting that a little bit wet. I'm going to put this on there so that I can put some soap and it doesn't go all over my hands. The soap helps it glide so that it will actually felt. I don't know that you could do it without the soap assist to see how I'm using it to kind of glide across the cotton. Oh yeah, Terry says it looks like a Monet. A long time ago I went to see the uh, water lily paintings when they were where were where was I? Maybe it was, I was in Paris somewhere? Where were they? It's at the Louvre? Don't remember anymore. Kind of feels like one side is gonna be thicker. I think I made once the top that I just did feels a little bit thick. So the soap will help it stay kind of down. Otherwise, it's kind of fluffy and hard to control. But if you were to make a coat, you can see how much work that would be because you'd have to go, like this would be part of the sleeve or something. It would be a lot of work. A lot of work. But it would be worth it. We're working on a pilot. For the last couple of years, it's been like a secret project. And we're going to make the coat of the character, the main character, with felt. It's going to be cool. Sounds cool. It is going to be cool. All right. Okay, so I'm going to flip this whole thing over again. Got all this wool all around. All right, here we go. Like a pizza. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to remove this side so I can bend the seam. Maybe I need to do a little bit more. I need to add more soap. Is it, if, see here? I don't know if you can see this. Let me pull this down. Ooh, soap. So this does not want to... It's kind of coming up. So if that's the case, if you see it coming up, you need to add a little bit more soap. see what I'm doing here. All right, now we'll see if I got it, if it's kind of move it a little easier. Kind of doesn't want to come off. Oof. You see what I mean about the clumps? You don't want that. All right. So now I'm taking the edge that I that I overlapped from the other side. So 
One side is overlapped about an inch. This side's going to overlap another inch or more on this side. Now you can add another layer if you want it to be particularly thick and sturdy. Use some soap. You use a lot of water and soap in this process. No, I did not see it in London. I think I saw it either in France or in, of all places, um, was it Toledo? Maybe it was in New York. I don't remember. I remember traveling to go see, though, to Love Monet. Take Azalea to go see. One of my favorites. I traveled to wherever. There's a surprising. There's a few really beautiful Andrew Wyeth paintings that are displayed somewhere in Illinois. I don't remember where exactly, but I traveled to see those and I was so inspired. It was amazing. It's one of my all time favorites. So I'm peeling this down. So you can see why the plastic is important on the inside. Because this is how. Now we can do another layer. Should, do you think I should do another layer? One more? Like a small thin layer to kind of make sure. it another kind of cohesive. Or maybe not. What time is it? Let's see. Oh. It's been an hour. I don't think we have time to do another layer. We can post the results in the group. Mm -hmm. Show people how it turns out. Because you can also just needle felt on top of it. Okay, so now I'm going to cover it back up again. Kind of bonded that in place. And I'm going to use a little bit more soap. And then I'm going to beat the heck out of it. This is where the Mongolians dragging it behind their horses made sense. And why having a washboard would be really useful for this process. I think Arlene found herself on the wrong... She's commenting... Bought numbers, we didn't even start the thing. Huh. Is she reading into the future or what? I don't know. I wonder what that what was happening there. Ooh, I feel something bulgy. Bulgy. Uh, not bulgy. Alright, let's see about if I can do this on this limited. Usually I have a great bit. I put this on the table. And I have plenty of room. I've got kind of limited space on this one, so we'll see if this works. I don't know if it will, but we will find out. So what the bubble wrap does is it provides... Can you go get that towel in the closet that I was using yesterday? Not in the closet, I meant bathroom. So this is not, let me see if I can get that much. So, let's see. let's see if this will do it. I don't know. We'll see. So the towel will help. Boy, I hate that red like that. Oh, Nancy, she looked it up. Oh, if you want to see it, where are they? Oh, and at the museum in Paris. Oh, in New York. All right, so this is where it gets. So this is the felting part. You do this a lot. Now, if you do a lot of felting, it's good to have a pool noodle on the inside to give it a little bit of firm firmness so that it's easy. And you could put rubber bands 
I usually have rubber bands holding it in like a firm log and then you can roll it back and forth and back and forth. Because what's happening is it's agitated on the inside. Some folks will put them in the washing machine and then do hot and cold water. Can you go in there and kind of tidy up over there so when we do the rinsing action it's, it's not like a nightmare? <laughs> It's not a nightmare now. We've been rearranging the whole house. Y'all would not believe it. We have actually a space to exercise. I've been finding so many things in my collection. So again, in fact, the kit that I made is almost all stuff from my private collection. All right, let's see how this looks. Mm -hmm. and it won't be felted quite yet but what you will see is the piece starting to felt need some more soap the soap helps it stay in place Now I'm going to scrub the living daylights out of it on this piece of, whoops, can you make sure I just toss that towel? What I don't want to happen is I do not want that to get wet on the uh, electrical cords and cause a fire. I'm going to remove that cheesecloth because I don't really need the cheesecloth part. But I need to be able to kind of scrub it. This is kind of like the washboard of it. needs to roll a little bit more but I don't need the cheesecloth at the moment the cheesecloth has its purpose to keep it from kind of the pattern loosening up let me get that towel again Over enthusiastic with that. Okay, let's make that bundle again. Hopefully, I don't knock my drink over. get a workout. I feel like felting is a good one to kind of release tension. And after the day I've had, it's pretty much the most perfect craft I could do. I don't have a washboard that's uh, that has the 
that has the kind of texture, but the bubble wrap works really well. And what you'll notice is that Oops, there went one of the, uh, what you call it, tripods. Yeah, the soap is lasting a good while. It's an olive oil soap, so that, I don't know if it's the fats in there or what. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. Ugh, ugh, look at this. So that's a thin spot where I did not put enough wool. So to fix that, I can, let's see, let's add a little bit of agitation over here in that department and get it to kind of meld together. And I'll get some... Put a little wool in there, patch that. Where's that hole? Here it is. We'll go the opposite direction. The color does not look that great there, but let's see if I can kind of disguise it a little bit. Blend in there, you. Do what you're supposed to. Don't fight me. I don't like it when it fights me. Get off. Here we go. Ah, see the hole's gone now. Now to felt it in place. All right, so that's the part, the seams, see that, that's always, the seams are always where it's going to be kind of funky and kind of thick. So you want to keep an eye on those edges, but it's already starting to get, it's already starting to shrink. It will just need a little bit more agitation to get it it to do its thing. I think I'm going to fold it double over. Now, if you get these kind of weirdo pieces like I have happening on this side, you can always use a sweater deep pillar because look at how horrendous that looks on that side. It does not look good. But fortunately, you can shave it. Or flip it to the other side. There's no law that says you have to use this side. And you'll see it's double sided. starting to get there. This is clearly the better side. I'm going to roll it another couple times maybe. Try to get that to felt a little more densely. And the more you do it, you'll see that the
thing will start to kind of get the pattern will look like it, it doesn't fit in the inside or it doesn't it's like come it's too tight is what it'll look like hey message Arlene she's I don't know what she's watching she might be watching something two of them on YouTube you know I don't know who else is live. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know who's going live right now. Somebody is. Maybe she's seeing something from like an old stream or something like that. How is it then that it's being on this part? I don't really know. I've never seen it before. I don't know how to fix that. It's going to be pretty annoying when she's like, how come I'm not getting anything? As you can imagine, this is a good workout. Huh. All right, let's test it again, see what's what. Starting to get a little tighter. See how it's a little snug? This looks so ugly. I'm so tempted to rip that off. But it might be better for the inside and look fine on the inside, you know? Yeah, that, that doesn't look great. The soap helps it kind of blend. Okay, you know what I want to do? I want to cut this open. I want to see. I can't stand it. So here's what you do. Which is the better side? I want to kind of, I want to cut that off right there, but I'm not going to. You like the pinker side, so let's cut the hole right here. How big of a hole do you think we need? Uh, Enough to fit your head. You can always make it bigger. You can always make the hole bigger. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a hole in the middle doesn't have to be perfect I mean it looks good if it's perfect now let's pull this out Slide that business out of there. Let's see what it looks like on this side. Or should I wait, Azalea? Should I wait? I don't know. I'm going to wait a minute. Like okay, template is out. Now we have this thing here. It's like kind of a loose flap of skin. Ew. <laughs> okay, get some a little bit more water. Help this. Help it go a little quicker. I need to get on I know, I know. I told you this is going to be a little bit lot, a little bit long. I'm killing this bubble wrap. Can you hear it? There's a bunch of them popping. I'm kicking this uh, wolf's hind end now. I'm about to lose my rings. All right. 
Maybe I am making a cat cave. Okay, so I'm going to... So you keep rolling it and shaping it's not there's this is not the shaping part the shaping part happens when you dry everything off and you can steam it into place but now we're shrinking it I'm gonna roll it again let's see this bubble wrap is not quite as good as that other because that stuff is nice and like really has a higher, thicker texture. Oh yeah, it's an upper body workout. Oh, here it comes out, extruding. All right, now, so some of the shrinking will happen when you shock it with hot water and then you hit it with some cold. That shocks the fibers and they get, it shrinks even more. So that should, you'll see it shrink quite a bit. Ooh, boy. Man, that's kind of, you know, I said 50%. I don't know. This is not, this may, this may be a, like a small cat cave. It's kind of a dumpling hat, Azalea. <laughs> yeah, it got big. Well, it was big, but it hasn't, it has not completely felted yet. Well, maybe that's, maybe now it's really... Put the or well, you can keep scrumbling it around. That helps. And the the part that'll really do it is when you put it in the hot water. Can you run me some super hot water? Yeah. It's getting smaller. I can. Yeah. Turn it. Well, now y'all know why felted things can be kind of expensive because it's a it's a lot of work. All right, come on. Is it ready? It will be by the time you get over here. Well, you're gonna have to get the you know. Um, Here's where it's going to shrink a lot. Hot. Alright, we're going to shock the heck out of it. Now cold. And I can already feel it starting to firm up. It's really cold. And we haven't even gotten to the fun part yet. Really? Slamming. Oh. 
you know the slamming. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna slam the heck out of it. Get ready. The fun part. Get all the moisture out. I'm gonna find a towel to slam it on. Get the towel in there. Okay, you can see that it shrunk a little bit more. Okay, let's um, let's slam it. Okay. Alright, there we go. I get stretchy bracelets off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. She is thrusting that down. Slapping. <laughs> okay, you. Oh! It's <laughs> wet slapping my foot. <laughs> that was a double hand throw. <laughs> the double, the double I'm combo. Lot, I'm trying to put a lot of power behind it. The it's harder a, you hit it, the combo strike. That's why they dragged it behind horses. Now there's a wet spot on the floor. <laughs> now it's just slapping. Sorry. You can't get it. Get <laughs> the wet slapping my feet. <laughs> She's putting her back into it, y'all. Okay. Breaking a sweat. All right. Hey, how cute. Let me view. <laughs> hey, that's nice. All right, there we go. Could be steamed. Yeah, try it on. It's still wet. It's still wet, but not too wet. Right. It's going to be big, but it's also super cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, so charming. You made that so, that's like an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, that is cute. You should go look in the bathroom. I'm going to set the camera back up. Let's see the pink side. The pink side has a growth on it. We'll have to fix that. A growth. A growth. <sighs> All right, y'all. So, look, where I patched the hole, I'm going to needle felt that. That's on the one side. This is oh, the one side. All damp now. Sorry. And then this is the other side. This is the better side, I think. But look at that cool texture. That's kind of uh, bumpy like that. So you could go in, and I could probably go in and felt that a little harder. But. You get the idea. You can steam it. There's a little bit of thickness around the seam area. And what I can probably do is go in and shape it and trim. You can go in and shave parts off, like that one spot that had the hole. Pretty good. I don't know if I love that kind of weird, rusty maroon color. But it looks good, and it's reversible. Except for, we'll fix this spot right here. Ugh, right there. Oh yeah, here's the other part. This didn't now you can see where it didn't felt quite as hard. That's how thin it is. That's the hole that I cut. All right. I am definitely fixing this. I don't like the way that looks right there. And then there's I need to patch. But you can needle felt on the place where there's a hole and easily fix it so that you have a reversible hat. Now, this could have been made with another layer, but then it would have not been as it would have been really thick. And I don't know if you need that kind of thickness but to make a cat cave you would just make that like double the the, the size of that pattern because yeah, you gotta make it bigger and thicker bigger and thicker to hold its shape because that i mean you could still you could probably use that as a basket if you were to steam it and make a pretty cool basket maybe put something on the outside maybe like a starch to make a basket but when it's drying, you would put something. I have a head mount. I'm going to go over it and tighten it up a little bit more because it's a little bit loose on my head. So, anyway, Azalea, let's begin the live now, or the uh, live sale part. Anyway, I like that, how that came out. Yeah, that looks good. Nancy had a good idea of using this to make a decorative patch. Like, maybe we're at, like, this shape and then yeah, look at felting it on yeah. just make a patch. Just make a patch. A flower patch what she said. Yeah, exactly.
That looks really good for how hole. fast you did it. An hour yeah. and 20 minutes Not and bad. you made something like that. Hmm. It's nice and sturdy. It's cute. Mm -hmm. I'll wear it. All right, start anywhere. Okay, we're going to start. Oh, I'll show my graphic. No oh, okay, speed so round. speed around. All right. Anybody that's new to bid on an item or to place a claim on it, you comment the lot number. It's going to say it on the tag underneath the price. An invoice will be sent to your email address, and it will say, Gringo Studios, be pleased to purchase. Uh, if you've never shopped with us before, I do not have your email address. So go ahead and send us an email at this uh, email address right here at step number three. And I can send you an invoice if I have your email address. And all you got to do is finish it and we can ship it. All right. That's it. Let's go. Ooh, Nancy says, let's have a felting retreat. I like the story. That story, that would be fun. Okie dokie, let's start. Oh, Azalea, you found this purple, what was this called again? Purple emerald. purple emerald. So I found this in Tucson. I'd never seen it before. I was going, I was looking for more of that gem grade lapidolite, and I thought this was it. This is not gem grade lapidolite. This is what's called, say it again. Purple emerald. Purple emerald. I've never heard of such a thing, but they convinced me, my uh, gem guy was like, I was like, is this for real? Is this a real stone? And they're like, it for real is a real stone. So it's $15, $8.46. I personally love these and I will keep whatever is not because this is like right up my street. Yeah, they're perfect for your gem. Episodes. They're perfect. They have like glittery little, little pieces in there. They're really lovely. They're so lovely. Azalea, should I do a little bit of a discount on those? Let's do a little bit of a discount. Let's do it about 12. All right. These are from Tucson, our Tucson. I want to move them. We got to make up for the uh, horrendous loss of today. 846. Beautiful. I have six of them. And they they range from this like really this light makes them look like they're like kind of like amethyst, but if you see these in real life, they're not like amethyst. They are not because of the color is more like berry, I think. It's a different shade of purple. And they have these like shiny bits, the chatoyants, that are kind of like sunstone. So they're really lovely. Some of them are more silvery. Here's the other ones. As I strung them up, they're like this. Look at the, how good they look. We this is. Mm-hmm. That's that's perfect treasure necklace. Well drilled. I haven't seen these before. It's the first time I'd seen them, and I love it. I'm gonna try and get more if I can, because I have a feeling that that's gonna be a good one for markets for the markets okay this is a new one for us i haven't had this before this is peter site this is a beautiful peter site it has it's faceted rondelle i'm going to show I'm the, i think sunday i'm going to show you all how to make the easiest earrings in the whole world jermaine does not know what happened oh jermaine i had a basket of orders lifted out of the back of my car i must have left a window open and um i was so devastated i've been running errands all day long and i didn't notice that they were missing out of the back of my car along with the african basket so it was about 21 most of it i was able to replace but there are about five um packages that that um had going stuff to to, we're gonna either have to we'll email the people we'll email they would prefer credits in the store or in a future lot sale or, or if they want a refund or something but i think yeah. the idea of a credit that lauren yeah lauren suggested. had a good idea because that would be so wonderful if if i didn't have to refund everything because that i was so upset to discover what i had accidentally done i must have left the windows down in the back you know how when you're like really flying through getting your errands done and you're like on top of things and you're moving through uh, yes. wendy has a question yeah anybody that is going to get a store credit or we'll let will you be presented with the offer we'll get an email about it 
Mmm. Yeah, there weren't many. We were able to get most of it. Yeah, and I was so upset. Like I was, it was one of those things where it's like, universe, please stop testing me. Okay, what does that say? Is that six millimeter? Oh no, that says eight millimeter. I think these are, let me see how big that is. Fit in there. That doesn't quite fit in the six millimeter. So it's probably like a seven millimeter. Peter Sight. And Peter Sight is like tiger eye but with streaks of like a sodalite blue these are kind of i haven't seen it i've never seen it faceted before so that was pretty fun to see that i thought they had kind of a neat they reminded me of like the southwest like dusky tucson don't you think i think they're beautiful so these are 975 is the lot number and these are $24. If you're watching on replay, you can email here and inquire if we have more. Jermaine, we've had so many car issues, so many car issues. It's it's hasn't been it's been hard. I don't know what's going on. We've had a lot of uh, just a string of bad luck with things like that. With first getting uh, the hit and run and run off the road. It totally totaled the car. We had another car, our Honda, and it messed up the axle so it was not drivable after that. And that happened on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And since it was a hit and run, it's actually a criminal offense. And that's why, like, we have not heard anything. They were like, well, since it's criminal, it's going in through, like, they won't release names or anything, so we can't. We can't contact, like, we've contacted our insurance, but they're waiting on their insurance and what happens with uh, their case, I guess. All right, so there's five of those, if there's any interest in that. Now, we had, was it one of these? Oh, wow. Those are really gorgeous. I like. Uh-huh. I remember this. I had that strand. Have to redo the pen on that. Yeah, that was a while ago that I We'll do these at 25. This is 842. And this is, oh my God, these are like the best quality of Iolite. Look at that. They're perfect. They're so perfect. Nicely drilled, beautiful size. 842 if you're interested. I tell you, I have worked up a sweat. Okay, the next one. Oh, wow, this Peridot is juicy. juicy. If people don't want this. My friend uh, Joanne was on the hunt for good Peridot. This is 859.14. 14 Look how good that, that is. You know what? This looks just like I bought some of a similar in tourmaline about 10 years ago and it looks just like this but this is a good gem quality uh, tourmaline I have or uh, peridot this is 859 of two of them now this this was something I was excited about I don't mind at all Azalea this was the one that I was keeping these are mine but um, so this is 849 36 I'm gonna slash those but you know what if if that's these are turquoise that are hand carved from Afghanistan. The guy had one big strand left, and man, we wheeled and dealed. And I was like, "Listen, one of the round, one of the flat." Uh huh. The, these are my favorite. So if if um, they don't sell, I don't mind because I'll make some earrings with it. This I bought these to go on my treasure necklaces, and I feel like they're just beautiful. They're just such beautiful quality. And I haven't seen turquoise carved like that in these gourd shapes. It was eight forty nine. Beautiful. I have some in these pumpkin shapes. They are truly delightful. Look at these. Have you ever even seen? This is not dyed. This is the natural stone. 
I took some pictures of the samples. This guy had lapis and turquoise. He didn't have as much turquoise because I don't know. I guess turquoise is pretty rare. The plate that he had of it out was about a little bit bigger than this of the rough. And it was like chunks of the sky. And this was, he's like, this is not, this is from old stock. So it's from a few years ago, but he put them out. And I snapped that up as fast as you like. That's 850. I have, let me see. I have, how many are in there? There's five of these. These would look fantastic. Treasure necklace, earrings. I would do that a mix and match earring, put one of them on there. Actually two, you get earring, you get, you get several out of that. Two pairs of earrings at least. How many have we got, five? Five. So lovely. Oh, I have a couple of these. 838. This is from the Tucson. This is, we bought these in African Village. So these are old Venetians. Old Venetian beads. When I go to African Village in Tucson, I scour it for the unusual and hard to find. And they have one strand of this way, way in the back. I'd never seen this colorway. It usually is in a red. These usually come in a red. And they're from probably, I don't know if these are super old or not. Usually if you can, like the older ones are in a dark, dark red. I haven't seen them in the white. But the lady that sold them to me was like, oh yeah, they're from Murano. From back, she, I don't know, she had them. I really couldn't. I couldn't really understand what she was talking about. Like, if it was two years ago or 20, it was hard to understand what she was saying. But, um, possibly because I was looking at everything. And not paying that much of attention. All right, so this is some really pretty turquoise. This is not dyed at all. So I got this from my, my uh, turquoise guy in Tucson. I put, I found some darker... So you get a little bit of both. The dark side, see that? It's more of a darker denim. And this is exactly an Asheville winter sky right there. Not dyed. And you know what? I When I got back to the hotel, I took some pliers and I crushed one to make sure. Just because I didn't want to get took. You know, sometimes you get took. And then while I was in Tucson, I was going to take them back if they weren't legit. So that's 826. I'm going to mark that to 30. How many of these do I have? Four. I have four of these on 826. If you would like any of this really saturated turquoise, it's a good quality. I mean, you know what? We There's a few people that had, we went to, what was that show that we went to? The Electric Park, that, that, that our, our turquoise guy? He had a lot, but man, a lot of the turquoise was kind of expensive and really small. We had four of those? Yes. Good job, good job. Okay, this is 972. This is some really this excellent, is excellent quality rhodochrosite. Now, generally, rhodochrosite is in, done in rounds. You've seen it in round, rounds and ovals. I have not seen it faceted, so that's why I snapped it up. If you like pink, this is a beautiful, soft strawberry milk pink. It's beautifully faceted, good hole size. And I think on Sunday I'm going to show how I, how I make earrings. These, this is 972. I have five of these. Isn't that lovely? Oh my gosh, look at this with turquoise. You know my passion for pink and blue. Or red and blue. Actually, red with that would be pretty. Let's see if I have anything that's that red would look good with. Oh, so this is a strawberry quartz. You've seen strawberry quartz. And if you've seen it, you've probably seen a lot of fake strawberry quartz. Now, they call it that because it has teeny little inclusions that are called rutiles that are in there. And it's a kind of an iron oxide in there, and it has a really pretty, like, 
they kind of look like sunstone but the like in that kind of chatoyance when you look at it, that kind of shimmer but there's a glittery pink so this is a good quality strawberry quartz 973 let's mark it i have four of these let's mark it down to we'll do 24 on these from 26. 973 if you're interested this is legit it is not dyed it is not fake it is the real deal which is kind of you know you see that look at all that that beautiful chatoyance and shiller so they range from about 12 millimeter in the middle to around eight at the ends you can get that with earrings and it looked like really good quality sunstone but without you know being kind of a little bit pricey so I marked that at 24. We have how many of them? Four. Is that it on those? Okay, and the last thing of the evening. I didn't have time. All right, this is a good kit, y'all. I only have 10 of these. I'm going to let you know right now. I don't know if I have... I Actually, I know I don't have the fixings to make more. So... I did this. I call this the mermaid kit. It's uh, $9.74. It's $78. I know that seems like pretty high, but wait till you see what's in it. And I gave a discount on this because what I did was I went through my, my studio and I just pulled what I could pull from what I had in my cases. So let me get in there so you can see it. I have really good quality faceted rondelle of triple a grade peridot that's this blue opal they irradiated it i don't know how they got it that color but i smashed one to see if it was a dyed on the inside they did something to it that they're like this beautiful pale blue and their pearls i put in look at this when was the last time you saw faceted pearl so this is pretty pearl centric so this is a a mother of pearl pearl it's a big one some stick pearls good juicy these are none of these pearls are younger than probably 16 years because this is coming out my personal collection aquamarine in there there's no glass this is all gemstone look at these little popcorn pearls so this I thought of this is like an earring kit and look at this yeah look how succulent that is so this is out of my private stash. These are I got these from Sona a few years ago. This is really good gem quality peridot. Look at that. More yes, pearls. Yes. Pra Praiseolite. That's green amethyst. Oh, look at this. This uh, Huh? I only have 10. I can't make more. And look at this. A clasp. This is $78. Listen, I gave you all a discount on this because I was trying to sell it so I can kind of recoup my loss. So I went through my my personal collection and I'd been saving these for a while to make some necklaces for the shows. But I was like, all right, well, they're going in. So there's a, a brass octopus class. So this is actually, if you were to t tally that up, take it to a bead, if you were to buy that at a bead store, this would easily, easily go over $100, no doubt. Because... It's good quality stuff in there. There's no glass in it. Not that I have a problem with glass, but it's just a different mix. There's some faceted triple A grade moonstone. Well, there might be some left. Mm -hmm. So clear, mm -hmm. Perfectly clear. The aquamarine. So what I tried to do was make it so if I had if I had it, I would put it in there. Oh, sorry, sorry. Like we'll put no, we'll just put it right here. You're going to show that and put it right there. Yeah, that's awesome. This is an awesome kit. This is probably one of my favorite ones that I've made. And I thought the Lapidolite one was my favorite with a gem, gem grade. So I found these sticks. I got those several years ago. Look at how cool those are. They're top drilled. They drill like that. So you could make earrings. That's earrings right here. Let's do it. Let's look at how many different things you could make out of that. There's a pair right there. Look at this. We'll design on the fly right now. Look at that. Oh, my God. Those... That hurt me a little Show bit to put those in there. Show them more. Yeah. Well, I don't have any more. This was out of my... I put those... That was what was left that I'd been hanging on to for... Before you were born, my dear. I remember exactly where I got these from. Exactly. Look at this. Heck yes. 
And then look at these weirdos. Isn't that neat? There's two of those in there. Popcorn ones. What's that big faceted gem you got? That big crystal clear too, though. Oh, so the this one is praiseolite, that green, so delicious. This oh, wow. is triple A grade quartz, water clear. Yeah, and it's beautifully drilled. You can put that on a treasure necklace. Let's make a treasure necklace right now. You can do it right here. You have a good start. I know I love it. All right, so that's the kit. There's a lot of this opal. This is the blue opal I was talking about. It has a lot of fire. I'd never seen it in this. I it's it's treated to make it this blue color, but I split one with a, a pair of pliers to see if it's coated. They're not coated. Somehow the color goes all the way through. Yes, Wendy. You see that? Isn't that gorgeous? But look at these together, how they look. I know. Beauty. So delicious. So lovely. All right, I'm going to get that little scooper and scoop this up. All right, we only have two left of that kit. Let's show the list. Okay, so there's only two left. Scooper. Oh, no, Wendy, I'm in love with this one. I think it's one of my, my most favorite. Well, partly because I have pearls in there that I haven't seen before, and I just had just a little, like, extras, you know, in my collection of what I had, and I thought, hey, you know what? This, people might want some of this, because you can't get it anymore. There's only so, one left. One left. Oh, not anymore, Anthea. Got it. Thank you, Anthea. The scooper is pretty good. Look at this. It's like bulldoze yeah, in there. so satisfying. Yeah, this is a deal on that because half of these you can't get anymore. Number one, like I saw faceted pearls. When I was shopping for pearls in Tucson, I found like three strands and they were all kind of mediocre. I bought them anyway because I was like, well, I might use them. And then when I got them home, I was like, man, this is nowhere near as good as the original what I had. So anyway, there's that. I hope you guys love it. I can't wait to see what y'all make. This is particular. I should mention that look at all the, the ports of connection. So I think of these clasps like this as a focal clasp. So if it turns anywhere on the neck, it looks good. So when, I'm, when I've used this before, I've put it in the front. You can hang things. I put chain and it opens in the front like that. You can just get in there and open it like that. You can put it to the side. Yeah, the clasp alone, I usually, in my Etsy shop, I charged like 20 bucks for that. The, yeah, these came in a bunch of different sizes, too. Scoop it up. Yeah, um, it was horrible. We lost about $1,400 in that, so it was like I had to replace pretty much, well, we had to replace everything, so it was not a good feeling at all. Yeah, we did replace, well, we didn't replace, uh, you know, the, the four or five, but it was not a good feeling, you know, and it made me kind of feel a little bit angry with people in the world and, and you know, but you know what, sometimes when that happens, I think, you know, it's just like, like if you're in a video game, that's like one of the levels, you know, it's not, life is not going to always be in doing things in your, you know, like you want it to do. It's not always going to work. It's not going to always work in your favor. And so I thought, you know, I could have run off the road or I could have had, you know, maybe I could, like one of the kids could have been in the car or something and someone snatched it. This is the set. I don't know if I got these from Bead Shop. I don't know where these came from. Oh, Facebook user. We had a whole pack, a whole basket of 21 orders snatched right out of the back of my car. I was running errands and I must have left the window open because when I came back, um, and I didn't notice it at first. I only noticed when I was going to the post office and I had everything piled up in the back of my car. And um, yeah, so my basket was also. 
Well, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think of it as a soulless person. There are a lot of people that have had very, very bad things happen to them. And a lot of people have lost a lot, especially during the pandemic. Asheville is a really expensive place to live. And there's a big, like, homeless kind of community that, that lives. I th Anyway, I think they live. I've actually come across them on the Mountains to Sea Trail in, off of the Blue Ridge Parkway because it's kind of close to 26. And I came down off of the path that was underneath the bridge and I was just checking out to see. I thought there might be a creek or something. And it was just a, you know, homeless encampment. It made me sad, you know. So sometimes people fall on hard times. Maybe they thought it was something else. I don't know. But, uh, you know, maybe they'll enjoy them, you know. I don't know. Anyway. Or little gemstones. <laughs> I know. Well, maybe, you know, who knows what will happen. I don't know how I could claim it on insurance. And I don't. I don't know because my stuff, my car was listed like that. Yeah, it, really, it, there, it was no. all very unofficial. Well, the reason I can't is because it didn't go to the post office yet. It was on the way to the post office. That's why, because we had everything ready to go, and that's the thing was is that, you know. Oh, I've had I've been broken into many times in my car. Many times it makes me super super mad. And you know what, at least, so one of the things I was thankful for is that they didn't get my, what are they always taking in San Francisco? You're, there's a part, they're always ripping out of cars in San Francisco. Catalytic converter. Catalytic converter. At least my catalytic converter didn't get snatched. So they I just mean, took what was in my car. It was in kind of a busted parking lot. So they couldn't, nobody would have been able to go in there and do anything like that. Yeah. But, if you have the window open, somebody could easily slide Somebody it just, I don't know. It. That's but, worth asking, Kalite. That's true. I will, I'll call it tomorrow. Happens, you know, you can choose to go and get super upset about it, or you can choose to try to make it back, I guess. Well, in my case, we just said, you know, sometimes that happens. What are you going to do? I mean, I'm not happy about it, for sure, but uh, it could always be worse. Could have been my catalytic converter. Could have been Marty. Could have been Marty. Don't even say that. I would never leave him in the car. My son. <laughs> I know. Imagine that. No, I don't want to ever imagine that. I'd rather lose 1400 than my son. Oh, you know, we had, uh, you know, Robin, you know Jess. She had her, I think she had her catalytic converter snatched twice, if I'm not mistaken. So I counted it as, I was just happy that I didn't have to buy another, oops. We didn't have to buy something for the car. I was like, thank goodness it's something I, at least I can make, you know. So anyhow, all right. All right, thanks friends. Thank you guys so much for joining us and supporting us and being patient. Uh, we really appreciate everybody that comes and watches us because there's we've got plenty of competition and you guys choose to watch with us and we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. You know, there's a lot, you can buy your beads from a lot of different places out there. A lot of folks have really cool lives and we just really appreciate that you spend your evening or in your time joining us and that makes us feel really good and really special so we will see you on Sunday I'm gonna show y'all how to make some rondel earrings there's a couple different ways to use them I've had a few people ask how is the best way to do with that shape so tune in on Sunday I'm gonna show you how to use rondelles all right friends and I'll show you the finished the, the finished, finished hat beret. so this we made this today that's why it's a, a really long live tonight we're going almost two hours so we will see you on Sunday. Love y'all. Bye.